Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended uh, a month or so ago and they had been suffering from a chronic ear infection this their right ear for a couple of years prior to visiting our cells. With their last infection um, earlier in the year, in May, I've got their notes in front of me just to remind me. So, and they had been treated with both oral and topical antibiotics. And prior to visiting the clinic today, they visited their GP just to make sure uh, there's no active infection. And the GP advised that it's difficult to see because of this obstruction in the ear. Uh, they don't believe there's an infection, but they have prescribed some um, ear calm, which is an acetic acid spray. You can also get that over the counter in the UK. Um, so when they attended, we examined this ear and we can see this plug of dead skin and earwax and also debris, so post-infection. And I'm trying to wriggle this out of the ear, um, but there was some resistance and you'll see why in a moment. Not only has this patient got a really, really bendy ear canal, I would say it's bend, much bendier than the norm, but on the front part of the ear canal, you can see there's a bit of a protrusion there. And um, we're going to come back to that protrusion a bit later in the procedure because uh, underneath that, there was a, a, a bit of a pathology that needed uh, further treatment. So I feel like with the suction, it's just going to be too much of a fight to bring that through. So I attempted to use the forceps, but that just cut through this plug. The plug is not... If it was a bit firmer, then the forceps could grip onto it and pull it through, but it, it, it just cut through the debris. So I've used the ear hook there to dissect it. And I'm now going to go back with the suction probe. By making the plug smaller, it would be easier for us to then wriggle it through this narrowing. And you can see that protrusion to the right there is kind of locking this in place. It doesn't want to let go. But slowly but surely, it's coming away now. So again, we've just made this plug smaller to make it easier to remove. And I think another reason why this is a bit tricky to remove is because the distal end of the plug, so the, the end of the plug that's not visible to us, which is towards the eardrum, I think it was actually embedded onto the eardrum itself. And that's for the reason, uh, and you'll see it in a moment, the eardrum was um, had a, a covering of a thick layer of skin and debris just like this. So this is previous infection that the patient had. But with the antibiotics, of course, it helped to uh, resolve the infection, but all the debris is still there. And you can see it's stuck to the eardrum. So this is really tricky to remove because of the consistency. It's, it's really thick and creamy. It's embedded onto the eardrum. And this patient's eardrum is quite bendy, so it's difficult to get access. So just making contact with it, but it's not coming away as freely as I hoped. So in a moment, I'm gonna put some sodium bicarbonate drops in. Sodium bicarbonate drops works better for me when there's dead keratin, so dead skin in the ear. If it's earwax, I prefer um, olive oil spray. I think it just has a better effect. Um, when you've got dead skin, the sodium bicarbonate causes the skin to absorb the drops and then expand and swell, so it breaks it up a little bit. So I haven't put too much in, just enough to, to soften this. I'm just suctioning some excess. And I'm just going back to this protrusion because it was slightly in the way I was worried. When I was inserting the endoscope, that the tip of the endoscope wasn't going to be touching this portion. And I didn't know this is a, a bony protrusion or if it was just a thick layer of skin. And so I just gently approached it and I realised it's just some skin. So I'm just going to peel a little bit away. Um, so with these protrusions and blankets of thick dead skin, um, and I, I'm going to come back to that at the moment, I'm just focused on the eardrums. I want to remove the debris, as much debris off the eardrum as possible so this patient can hear better. So they could hear, obviously, a lot better already, but there's still some debris there that would affect the mobility of the eardrum. Now, we're not going to get every little last speck out. It's just not possible. But if you have a mental image of what the eardrum looks now and what it looks like at the end, you'll see a big, big difference. So that protrusion on the bony part of the ear canal, the front part, we're just going to ensure that's not a canal cholesteriotoma. 
It's a, a canal clutter term. It's very rare. I think it's one in 1,000 of otology cases get diagnosed with a canal clutter toma. And that's when you've got a formation of a dead skin cyst that forms in the ear canal itself. And this cyst is self-growing, and as it grows, it becomes destructive because the dead skin um, uh, releases um, enzymes, so proteolytic enzymes, and these proteolytic enzymes can start uh, almost decaying and breaking away the, the, the skin that lines the ear canal and the periosteum. So the periosteum is a sheath a membrane, if you like, that sits directly on the bone and it supplies all the blood and the nutrients to the bone. And if that's infected, it's called periosteitis. And then with periosteitis, that can then lead on to um, uh, an infection of the bone, an erosion of the bone, and um, sequestrum of the bone. That's when the bone separates um, from itself. So, and with a canal flesh table, because it's forever growing, um, this erosion of the bone, the infection of the bone, and the periosteum can go forwards towards the jaw joint, the temporal mandibular jaw joint, the TMJ, it, it, depending upon the location. So this is on the front part of the ear canal, so that's most likely what will happen if it was a canal cholesterol tumor. If it's on the back part of the ear canal, it can invade the mastoid bone, which is the bone behind the ear canal. Um, occasionally, rarely, I think it's, I think there is, it has been documented when I was doing the research, but uh, there has been a canal cholesterol on the roof of the ear canal, which has gone upwards towards the brain. So it can rarely, but, but still, there's still a chance it can potentially cause a, a brain abscess, meningitis. And then sometimes a canal cholesterol can actually grow towards the eardrum, through the eardrum, and it can affect the facial nerve. Again, that's very rare. You're more likely to develop that with a, a traditional middle ear cholesterol so I'm slowly peeling this away. Now, this patient, I don't think they had a... Well, they have got it. It's a stage one canal cholesterol tumor. It's a very, very early stage uh, where the skin is slightly ulcerated. It looks like the uh, porosteitis might be slightly inflamed as well. So written to the GP, got the medication. Um, and I've invited the patient back uh, after their course of medications just so I can review to make sure that it's fine. Because if not, I'm going to have to refer onwards to TNT. So again, I'm just delicately approaching the eardrum. And because this is a dear to the eardrum, you may have just seen, as I was pulling this away, the eardrum is flexing a little bit. But So we're just going to be careful. So we can see a lot of the eardrum already. There was also some granulation tissue, and you may just be able to spot that now. It's on the hammer bone. You'll get a clearer view at the end. But where you've got, where the suction probe is going towards now, just to the bottom of it, on the right-hand side, there's some granulation tissue there. So that's healing tissue. Whenever you see granulation tissue, it should tell you that there's been a previous infection or still an active infection. So it's just inflammatory cells. Um, it's made up of connected tissue and they have their own blood supply. So again, hopefully the medication the patient receives can resolve that granulation tissue. I'm sure it will because it's just a little patch there. the eardrum is slightly retracted and the way we know that is the hammer bone which is where I'm going for now this is the top part of the hammer bone the short process it's protruding outwards um, towards us uh, towards the entrance of the ear and whenever you see the hammer bone uh, and the short process of the hammer bone uh, protruding outwards it typically means the eardrum is pulled in so the eardrum is like a piece of cling film and when it's sucked in due to negative middle ear pressure, which is most likely caused by a blocked gestation tube, the eardrum, so again, um, if you kind of uh, substitute it for a piece of cling film, it wraps, it gets sucked in and it wraps around the bone, which makes that short process of the hammer bone quite visible and prominent. And the hammer bone can become slightly more horizontal in plane. Uh, uh, instead of uh, being vertical. So there's a bit of retraction here. I think, did we perform tympanometry? Yes, I did. Um, it came back normal, but uh, the patient did report some nasal congestion. So I've recommended some nasal decongestion spray just to help with that. Now the patient was finding the procedure quite therapeutic, if memory serves me correct. They were really relaxed. At first, they were quite nervous because they're, they've never had the procedure performed before. And obviously they're, 
and a bit of voltage, a bit of earache. So I'm now just going back to this, this region here. I'm quite satisfied with, with the eardrum. I think I am going to go back to the eardrum a bit later just to do a bit more work there, but the patient can hear really, really well now. So you can see this skin has become ulcerated. There's a piece of the skin missing. And underneath that, you've got the periosteum and underneath that, the bone. And it's just slightly red and wet. And uh, again, possibly some granulation tissue on there. But you can see there's a circular piece of skin missing. So that's a skin ulcer. So hopefully the patient can receive the medication and that skin can heal over. But in the meanwhile, I just want to clear up all this crusted dead skin because this skin, because of the infection, the debris had become impacted. The skin has itself migrated. So it's just been sitting on the, the canal wall, dying, decaying, releasing all these proteolytic enzymes, ulcerating the skin. So I just want to make sure there's no hidden surprises um, under this. And it's quite amazing um, how often you remove some looks innocuous, a piece of skin here like this especially at the floor of the ear canal, and it reveals uh, either a canal cholesterol what I've described before, or a benign uh, osteonecrosis. And that's when you develop a bony erosion, similarly to a canal cholesterol but the bony erosion is not caused by the dead skin cyst. Instead, it's caused by poor blood supply to the underlying bone. And that's the reason why the bone dies. And when it dies, it Again, you get sequestrum of the bone, so separating of the bone, which creates a pothole, a trench, and then you get a, uh, the skin then gets recessed, it drops into the pothole. So slightly different mechanisms behind both, both pathologies. So again, I'm just going to spend a bit of time peeling his way as much skin as possible without causing further trauma. We don't want to scratch this patient's ear canal and cause them to bleed, which will possibly lead on to an infection. So we're going to be really gentle here. And yes, yeah, spoiler alert, there was a bit of debris left. We could be at it all day, we really could. Um, but it wasn't necessary. We got as much out as we could, as safely as possible. Again, just lifting this carpet of dead skin, if you like, just to see this, just to make sure there's nothing hidden underneath, which there isn't, thankfully, in this region. Their left ear was completely fine, by the way. I don't know, I don't think I, had, I took the video for that. It was completely fine and normal and healthy. So given some tips of this patient, um, they have in the past got water in there, so water... Uh, it's probably one of the most likely reasons why you can develop an ear infection. So just discuss the water um, precautions. Now, you could get 100 people, for example, and you can get all of them to get water in there every single day. And the majority of those people would be fine, say 97 to 95 people, but around 5%, for example. And there's been some evidence where um, getting water in your ears has got a 5% chance. Uh, to developing swimmers ears, so otitis externa. Um, this probably needs to be a bit more research, if truth be told. But you could be on one of those unfortunate five people, five percent, and it happens very often after uh, at the end of summer or even at the beginning of summer when the weather improves and people are spending more time in the water and getting water in their ear. The number of people we see with ear infections exponentially rises. So water has got the potential because that's because it harbors bacteria. So it can introduce um, harmful pathogens in the ear. Water can also wash away the natural oils and acidity in the ear. So the ear secretes sebum, which is an oily lipid secretion, also found on our scalp. And it also secretes um, serum, which is an oily sweat, also found under our armpits. And these oily sweats and fat, fatty, fatty secretions, they... Uh, once secreted in the ear, they dissipate, they spread across the ear canal, the whole width and breadth of it, and also the eardrum. So it provides a protective film, an acidic, oily film. Water can wash that away. And when it washes it away, it exposes the underlying skin, and the underlying skin is no longer able to retain its internal moisture. So the moisture from the skin, it, it reaches the surface and it evaporates. So it causes a dryness, cracking and itchiness of the skin. 
and if you've got water exposure in there for a long time, the skin cells themselves absorb the water, they swell, they burst at the membrane, and um, it causes a maceration of the skin, so the skin becomes very tender, and it's, the outer layer of skin can no longer form its function, which is to protect the inner layers of the skin, which can then lead to dermatitis or an outer ear infection. Well, there's a still image of uh, all that debris that I removed, and I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care, keep well, and speak soon. Bye.